Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Happy Monday. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, and by a lot, I mean one very specific subject that I kind of want to get deep into because it concerns a lot of different stuff like d- DNA, geology, um, history, all of this stuff. But I'll try to keep it uh, clean and, and condensed as much as possible, but I'm not making any promises since I'm doing all this on the fly. So. Before we talk about Denisovans and their relation to the modern day Tibetans, we got to talk about the Tibetan Plateau. Now, a uh, new scientist came out with this article and a bunch of other uh, outlets have talked about the same thing. And the headline reads, extinct Denisovan people may have lived on Earth's highest plateau, which is of course the Tibetan Plateau. The Tibetan Plateau is pretty young uh, in, in terms of geo- geological standards. So the Himalayan mountains, uh, they're the result of the Indo the in, the Indo Australian plate colliding with the Eurasian plate. So wh- that happened. That started happening about seventy million years ago, which is pretty. That's not that long ago. Again, in in terms of of the Earth. So then, about fifty thousand fifty million years ago. Once they once that ocean that separated them, I forgot the name of the ocean. Let me look it up really quick. The Tethys Ocean. When the let me pull it pull, pull up a yeah. So here's a good picture. So here's the Tethys Sea right here. So once everything started coming together, the ocean floor at the time started rising up, and that became uh, the Tibetan Plateau or the majority of it anyway. And it's still rising to this day. Every year, it go, it goes up 0.2 inches. So that's just uh, to give you guys a, a, just some quick background info on why the Tibetan Plateau is so important. The second thing is a lot of the uh, headway, the water, it's kind of like a water tower for for uh, the the like the the Yalu River, the Yangtze River, a bunch of different rivers that flow down into China and other parts of Asia and um, India, come from the Himalayas. So that they themselves, the plateau itself, ranges between four thousand meters to four thousand five hundred meters. That's fourteen thousand to fifteen thousand feet. That's huge. Okay, so it earned it, it earns its name, roof of the world, for a reason. On average, it's almost zero degrees Celsius on average up there. Um, the air is very thin. It, so it's n- not an ideal place to start a civilization. However, there is a lot of evidence of, of people or some, some intelligence living there because they, f- they found a bunch of different tools up there. Uh, these tools themselves, we'll, we'll talk about the details later. Um, but there's this one archaeological site called Nawaya Devu, which is on the Tibetan Plateau, uh, that is in question in this in this article. So in, initially, scientists thought that Homo sapiens, modern Homo sapiens, were the first to to go up there and decide to live in those harsh conditions. But there is some evidence now that suggests that the Denisovans were there first which explains why the Tibetans have, they share some g- g- genetics with those people with uh, this, this article here from 2014, the Tibetan altitude gene came from extinct human spe- species, Denisovan. So in 2014, they, they found this out as fact. So now it's kind of rippling through sci- the scientific community. Like I was saying, the researchers assume that humans didn't move onto the Tibetan Plateau very, until very recently, 12,000 years ago. And they only occupied it permanently 3,600 years ago. But since they discovered Nawaya Devu, the, it, the, this site has yielded again uh, thousands and thousands of stone tools. These tools are distinctly different from the tools f- that they found in China ma- that are definitely confirmed ho- Homo sapiens. So it's not the same tools. So it's a distinctly different tool up there. So that's another clue that they that they're that that's there. So the scientists went up there. They used a sediment technology to date the the tools, and they 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 dated the strata when the last time that the, uh, those buried tools were touching the surface. And they estimated that the oldest tools are between forty thousand and thirty thousand years old. 
So either the, De- the Dennis Owens were on there back then, and if the Dennis Owens were on the plateau back back then, then there must have been uh, those proto Tibetan people there as well, because otherwise they wouldn't have that genetic marker. So around that time, there must have been some sort of mingling. And who knows how high the plateau was back then. It probably wasn't as high as it is today. So it definitely was high, no doubt about that. But it wasn't as high as it was today, as it was 40,000 years ago. So people were probably living there. They probably had an easier time living there, even though they did develop that that gene, that that altitude gene, because it was still high. But it must have been a a little bit easier to live on there than now, because now it's... I mean, there are people living there, but it's harsh, very harsh. And if you don't have that gene, you're going to have a tough time. Um, So here's a picture of some of the artifacts that they found. And again, these are 40,000 years old, so they don't look like much. But if you guys look closely, even with an untrained eye, you can see these uh, flat surfaces. Uh, Some of them have uh, 90 degree or a little uh, over 90 degree angles. There are sharp edges here. So these are definitely not natural rocks here. So let's talk about the Tibetan DNA now. So Tibetans carry an unusual stretch of DNA in their genomes, which is attributed now to the Denisovan. And it's been used as evidence that humans bred with an ancient group of of humans called Denisovans. We already talked about that. It helps them cope with limited oxygen, oxygen supply altitude. So just for reference, if you're if you're a viewer of this video and you live in Denver, what do they say? W- what's famous? It's a mile high, right? Mile high stadium, right? This is over three miles above sea level. Over three miles above sea level. So, if you live in Denver, I've been in Denver for a long period of time. It's, it. I, I mean, when I say long period of time, I mean long enough to notice how thin the air is. This is three times thinner. So. You probably walk up, up, walking up a flight of stairs is probably going to make you stop for a second. So this is what we're talking about here. So in 2014, like I referred to uh, this, this study here, they found that Tibetans between 40,000 and 30,000 years ago were descended from, either descended from or they, they're an ancient Tibetan, po- proto-Tibetan population mixed with these Denisovans on the plateau about 30,000 to 40,000 years ago. Another interesting thing about this date is that's around the time when Neanderthals went, out, went extinct. So again, it's a really interesting period of history. What was going down during this time? It's a, it's, um, that's something that people are probably investigating right now. If modern humans harness Denisovan DNA to survive at altitude, Perhaps the Denisovans could also survive on the Tibetan Plateau. So this is what the scientists, this is the next uh, hypothesis that they had. So they wanted to investigate this. And it. I don't think it's perhaps, I think it's pretty certain that they did. Because otherwise, why would they be up there if they didn't have it? And also, why would the Tibetans have this unique uh, gene if the Denisovans didn't have it, because it's pr- it's pretty conclusive that they got they got it from either the Denisovans or wh- wh- whatever uh, proto-human was or whatever uh, humanoid was up there. So maybe it was definitely some other population because this is such a a unique marker. I think the only other um, the only besides Tibetans, I think the Sherpas also have have uh, this gene as well. And they again, they also live at altitude. So Olson, that one of the archeologists, he thinks that the stone tools found on the plateau are the handiwork of the Denisovans because of what I mentioned earlier, because the modern humans, it's, th- their, their tools are, uh, they're distinctly different. So here's what he says. And let me know what you guys think in the comments about this. And I also wanna go over one comment at the, at the end of the, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start going over some really interesting comments and and responding on the air rather than through a comment, uh, r- rather than writing back because I feel like some comments are so good that I, I should respond to them. And uh, anyway, we'll get to that in a second. So here's what uh, the archaeologist says. What we know is that the Denisovans left their homeland in the Altai Mountains of southern Siberia and eventually trekked all the way to Melanesia. Uh, so Melanesia, again, is like uh, Indonesia, Australia, around there. 
or like New Guinea, basically around there, like in Indonesia now. They walked all the way down there for for a certain reason, right? So they took with them their signature genome. They took that's why people in Melanesia have this uh, Denisovan marker. Something happened that prompted them to leave. And so one logical route for such a huge migration may have included passage up and over the Tibetan plateau because that's what lies. If you were to go as the crow flies, which is in a straight line, then from the, from the Altai mountains to Melanesia, the, 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 the Tibetan plateau is a highly logical route because again, the plateau is huge. It's, I think it's like 2000 miles or maybe more than 2000 miles uh, east to west and like 650 miles north to south. So it's a huge st like stone, it's, it's just a huge obstacle to have to walk around. So up and over seems the, the, the quickest way to get through it. So that's a really good point that Olson points out. I didn't really think about that, but it, it, it does make sense when you look at the map. So uh, Noaya Dev Devu, uh, the, the tools there again, um, it's a known location of where Denisovans lived. And it's not like the ones, uh, it's, the tools aren't, aren't like the ones made by Stone Age humans in China. Um, the problem with this entire, if I were to poke holes in this entire hypothesis, however, it's, it's the holes are, lie in the fact that there's a severe lack of fossil or DNA evidence. So um, a lot of this is specula educated speculation, so to speak, because you can't deny the tools that are there. You can't deny that there are huge discrepancies be between the ones found at altitude and the ones at the, uh, at the, um, the Stone Age Chinese uh, and, and the people living in, near the Yangtze River. Uh, those tools are different. So again, this is a matter of finding the right pieces of the puzzle and putting them together. Perhaps there will be some DNA evidence that'll pop up. The problem is the Tibet, because the Tibetan plateau is big enough, no doubt about it. I mean, it's a country-sized thing that we're talking about here. There's a lot of peculiar things about the people who inhabited that area, such as the Tibetans. The Tibetans had a very interesting uh, religion. Um, they had, uh, and then, and even before the uh, Tibetan Buddhism became a thing. The proto-Tibetans had their, they had their own religion before that. I can't recall the name. It starts with an M. I'm pretty sure, but they had their whole they had an entire system uh, of 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 thought, uh, not just about the afterlife and and things, but they ha they had information on on how to live. They had certain uh, breathing techniques that they developed. They had a form of yoga. Um, they had uh, a star, uh, a, myth a mythology, and like a, a an understanding of the of the stars. So they were a full blown civilization for sure. Uh, it's just that where they lived is so it's so exclusive that it's physically exclusive from the rest of the humans that it it just couldn't thrive after a while. Because again, like I said, it, it keeps rising, and the conditions keep getting worse and worse. A lot of scientists are studying like climate change effect on, on the plateau, um, but they know for sure that it the plateau was utterly important for everyone living at lower altitudes because, like I said earlier, it was it's like the giver of life because all a lot of the waterways come from that come from there, make a lot of head the, all the waters make a lot of headway from that from that plateau. So basically, if the water dried up it would also have the reservoir would probably be in the on the plateau i think as as i understand it okay so uh long story short tibetans more than likely since they share dna with they have this utterly utterly important uh gene the altitude gene that most likely came from denisovans um because no other no other ethnic group besides sherpas seem to have it so that much is confirmed. And so what do you guys think? You just have, all you have to do is connect the two together. Now, again, like I said, there's a, there's, there's a very glaring lack of DNA and fossil evidence. However, I think with time and effort that might come, but so for now, I guess you just have to educate yourself on what's out there, what's confirmed. And then from there, it's just a matter of opinion. So I would love to hear you guys talk about it in the comments. Speaking of comments, so there's this 
commenter on BitChute named Bill, and he's he's had some some great great uh, comments in the past. But um, one thing he brought to my attention was well, he brought two things to my attention on two separate videos. But th my last video I did about the elongated skulls found in um, in uh, Peru or in Bolivia, and he thinks that or he said he's heard reports quote some had significantly larger volumes than a normal human skull uh to me the only way that i can make sense of it is they were imitating something so either there was a race of people with with elongated skulls and larger brain volumes or this was a rare mutation or of rare recessive gene trait um or it was something like skulls. one way or another there had to be people looked up to as kings or gods or something with larger elongated skulls and superior intelligence. I'm not saying that I'm 100% correct, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so he brings up a good point. There is, if if there were a superior nobility that had exclusively elongated skulls, then it would make sense after a while, people would just imitate it after a generations pass and those people are gone. It, ju it just sticks around in the culture. I mentioned Akhenaten in that, in the, the, the old Pharaoh of Egypt, I think he's Tutankhamun's grandfather or father, one of the two. Anyway, he had an elongated skull. It, it, it's confirmed, and he was a friggin' pharaoh. So, it may I don't know if they're extraterrestrials or not. Maybe I don't know if they they maybe Akhenaten elongated his skull like forcefully when he was a kid, and they he got that from another generation of nobility that exclusively had elongated skulls. Either way. Um, I thought this was a great comment because I, did, I failed to mention this in the video. So yeah, maybe they were imitating somebody because people, groups of people don't just spontaneously, not just in one area, in this case, elongated schools. I mean, it's across the globe. They, they, it, I don't think that's a spontaneous thing that just pops up. I think that's something that had to be developed and inspired at some point in time. So Bill, that's a great... Uh, that's a great uh, comment. And then Bill also left another comment on the, the New France, uh, Quebec City, Palisade Walls one. He made this really interesting uh, point about the wooden walls. Uh, they first, they wanted to, they probably had bears and wolves to worry about. That's a great point. Uh, wooden walls would do a lot to just uh, keep, keep them from coming in or it would mitigate that, um, that threat. And then the second thing he brought up was this interesting story about invading armies so he says when you're talking about invading armies uh, into a small village you need to be concerned about people getting you in your sleep even if they had cannons and guns and whatnot they can't sneak that stuff around very easily um, so a wall would go a long way toward uh, keeping that away then he goes into this Vietnam vet that he that he uh, knew that was sneaking to villages and they would kill combatants in their sleep, and that was a known tactic. I did not, I knew about this peripherally, but I didn't, again, it didn't occur to me. I didn't mention it in the video. So maybe, maybe um, that's also why they had that wood palisade wall up. Who knows? But yes, even back in the 1690s, they killed people in their sleep, and I wouldn't, it doesn't surprise me in one bit that that, that probably was a popular. Uh, military tactic when you're dealing with these small small villages because all you got to do is sneak in kill a couple guys at the top and then the rest fall down like dominoes anyway th so that was those were the two comments i hope there are more comments and then may hey maybe if you leave a cool enough comment you'll get featured in the video uh, i'm gonna dangle that fruit in front of you guys that, that carrot in front of you guys but i think it's fun it's fun interaction fun for everybody and let me know about what you think about this Tibetan Denisovan uh, plateau thing. And I'll, I'll have a video for you guys tomorrow.